Tim, I wanted to start with you first. Emily has said that you were influential in getting Vengeance going, and you actually pitched the president at Tubi. How did you capture the magic of Wyona Earp and this fandom in those initial conversations? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty easy, you know? I love this show, and to talk about it was easy, and to talk about the Earpers was even easier. Um because the fandom's just so incredible. And I literally just described what this fandom was about and 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 kind of some of the the influences that it's had on my life and some of the experiences that I've had over the years and, and how special this show was. Um and um I think it was easy to tell that I was being genuine. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of these people aren't used to hearing that. <laughs> I've never I'm never intentionally pitching anything even when I was trying to fight for something um and I think that came across also but this is an incredible show it's 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 you know what I mean and um I I might have said this is to be's chance to be the Winona you know they can be the hero you know, Melanie you also have a long-standing relationship with Tubi with clickbait on the platform which is brilliant by the way it feels like streaming platforms offer more creative freedom compared to traditional networks. How does Vengeance take advantage of that flexibility and push the boundaries of these stories and these characters? What I think it offers us is um, we, because Josh at Tubi uh, was with us from the beginning, um, he was always a fan of what we were doing. So it was more just the feeling of like, we trust you, you now just go do it. So nobody was breathing down our necks. Nobody was like, um, you know, often in television, you have like a lot of cooks in the kitchen and yeah. here at Tubi, it was just like, there's, there's kind of one cook and it's us. And Tubi, um, was so great about being like, um, we can't wait to see what you cook us. So I think that's rare. And I do think you can feel it in, um, in performances and in writing and in direction, when you don't have the people micromanaging, there's a freedom mm -hmm. that that is really what Winona is about, is like finding freedom. And that's what made it so magical to begin with, um, is that it's a bunch of people making a show that we wanted to make. You can feel that in the, the bonds that you all have formed as well. And Tim, I imagine there's some pressure when reprising a role to build on the legacy and the foundation that you've all created. But with the unwavering support of this fandom, you mentioned how that trust and love provided you with this sense of comfort during filming. How did that support not only influence you during this filming experience, but also allow you to take more risk in your performances? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because... Melanie said something before and it's talking about something else before just saying how it was kind of easy to trust your instincts when it comes to these characters and and that's how I feel with Doc because I've always felt that but I never thought about it until she said it out loud and I literally had that moment of oh shit that's what it is man mm -hmm. boom and um yeah and I think that comes from just we've been given or I've been given this incredible character. I've been given an iconic character that everybody known from history, but that was never put on me by anybody from, from, from sci-fi, from Emily, from producers, from Bo Smith. Nobody pressured me to play Doc Holliday the way that everybody thought Doc was supposed to be. So that was great. I never had that pressure and I could just kind of bring the character to life that I thought he was and, and he existed. And, and I was able to do that throughout the years. And I was, I realize that it's it's come more naturally and I trust myself better with that character and their instincts than any other character I've ever played. I just know mm -hmm. I think I'm making the right choice. And maybe it just comes from being in such a safe place of knowing not that you're not going to fail, but it's OK. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's OK, man. It's OK if you if, if you if you if you if you do. You have that room to fail. Melanie, the medium in which you're telling the story is also different. In a 90-minute special, you have a clear sense of where your character starts and potentially ends, though, of course, we're hoping for more in the future. Were there any specific techniques that you utilize to get back into Wyoner? And how does kind of this contained format impact the way that you approached her journey in the special? Wow, that's a really good question. Um, well, first of all, yeah, it's a really good point. When you When you don't um when you have you know 10 episodes anything could happen like 
they, you could know where you're headed and then that could change and then you're headed somewhere else. So you don't actually know for sure until you get to episode 10, if what you thought was happening in episode 10 is going to happen. But in this, we knew, we knew like maybe a couple lines would change, but the, the story was what it was. So that, that was really nice to go, okay, this is the be beginning, middle, end. And then, um, I think it just simplifies, you're not going, well, what if she does this? Because later she might, it's very clear, like mm. you know where it's headed. So you can um, set that up with more confidence. Um, I think in approaching how I played her, I don't know that I that I did anything. Um, I wish I had a good answer, like a craft-based answer, but a lot of it is just, uh, I just got there and I said the things. And because she lives so yeah. deep in who I am, this is not a character that I need to work very hard to find, um, which isn't as impressive as like, I really crafted her. I, I, I just kind of, Emily's a good writer and I said her things and... Yeah, and I think that connection with the character is so special and why we see so many great performances throughout this series. I have a question for the both of you, but you both hinted that Wyona and Doc's journey and vengeance emphasizes that choosing love doesn't necessarily make things easier. Having worked together for so many years across different projects and disciplines as actor and actor and actor director, how does that trust between the two of you lend itself to a place that we find your characters in the special? I mean, that's interesting because there's just Doc and Wynonna kind of trumps all other relationships in some way because they were the first and yeah. so you know what I mean like that was first like that's the foundation that's always like it's just such a safe place to go back no matter what <laughs> happens wherever we go to whatever's wherever in the in the world or whatever show or whatever Doc and Winona is Doc and Winona like I just know oh, there she is there's there she, there she is like it's it's literally it's that simple it's my brain literally does that there she is that's one <laughs> one una. and um, it's just it's magic sauce I, I agree I, I've said this before but I think um I think it's such a gift to be able to have have known someone for so long in in like you said in different like we go to cons we've done different things but it but it always just like enhances when we come back to Doc and Winona we just have so much more to put in there and um you just don't get that very often and I think that's part of the magic sauce. It's like, it's, it's like not something you can try to do. Like you, you can't create out of nothing. You can act like you are and you know, like, um, but, but when you have that kind of um, diversity of, of a relationship, oh, it just, it's like it builds and then it adds so much to the to the Doc and Wayona magic. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the benefits of this special is that new and existing fans are gonna discover it. It's the perfect opportunity to go back and binge watch the season. For each of you, what was that definitive episode for your respective character and why? A little tricky. I mean, I the, the answer for me used to be 411, 412. So uh, just like that ending, you know, I thought it was such a great ending. Um I don't know now it's just a special to be honest it's i, I can't wait mm. to watch it and see what what they get from it i think it's it's a special and i love the word i used to be like what is this word special but <laughs> it's it's so fitting for what this is you know what i mean um i don't know right now it's this this is the newest uh until who knows hopefully maybe the next one yeah. uh and maybe 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 that one yeah same <laughs> <laughs> no, because honestly, I could take a mazillion from season one. Fresh and it was made season two. Mel was pregnant. Like there was, there was so much going on. Season three, we lost our show. We came back. What? How yeah. is it possible? It was like each one so has so many different memories and moments. I mean, it's been a huge part of our life. I got one final question for the both of you, but you know, Tim, you described this opportunity to play Doc again as once in a lifetime for each of you. If you have the opportunity to write another chapter for a character you've played in the past which would it be and why uh, instant star little tommy q it's time for the reboot i don't know who wants to bring it back we're ready i want more uh alex johnson and jude uh i need to hear more about the story 
uh, and and see where we left off. I feel like a lot of people will agree with me that we should have got a wedding that we didn't get. Uh, and we got some webisodes to try and make up for a wedding we didn't get. But uh, I'd love to see uh, where Jude Harrison is at these days um, and see what she's up to. I cried on RoboCop and I can't remember why. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean? You were in RoboCop? Yeah, for half a minute. And I uh, cried. And uh, I'd like to revisit that and go, what? <laughs> and uh, let's fill that up a bit. Let's, what's the deal? Oh, yeah, my husband lost and he was a, oh, yeah, because I heard him playing guitar and it was beautiful. And then I was like, oh, my God. And, uh, and I'd like to see more of, like, what's, what else is she about? What's, and, and then what? How many years have I known you for? <laughs> not nine. Too long for you not to open every conversation with. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I was there for one day, so I, I don't remember. 